Thank you so much for coming to my talk. I'm absolutely beyond thrilled to be here. This has been a three-year journey of coming up with a single, with a little bit of an idea that, oh, hey, I could do something useful and write an article. And I've been walking around here, and I gotta say, more than half of the people I've talked to not only have heard of React on Rails, but they actually use React on Rails. How, I, let me get a take here. How many people actually use React on Rails in their projects? And how many of you have heard of React on Rails for this? Okay, so pretty much everybody. I am so stoked. So I did come here all the way from Hawaii. I am the CEO and founder of Shaka Code and friends and guests. And if any of you want to um, get the slides after the talk, shakacode.com slash talks. I'm super easy to reach also, justin at shakacode.com. Um, it's a little bit about me. Um, my two favorite things in life that bring me happiness are surfing and a great work environment. They kind of go together in Hawaii. You also need fast internet. Okay, so this is a quote from Matt's. The last talk was great because it talked about happiness. And you see the highlight at the beginning, at the middle of this. Ruby is designed to make programmers happy. And I want to, you know, when I go about designing React on Rails, a big part of it is, is I want happiness. And I want to make it like Rails. Um, kind of like the last talk, it's not going to be quite like what we saw with the other languages and other frameworks. I want to build something that just works. Okay, the Rails Doctrine. The Rails Doctrine came out in January 2016. This was about maybe a year and a half after I started, or about half a year after I started working on the gem, and about a year and a half after I started working on just this idea. What I loved about the Rails Doctrine is I read through it and I go, oh my God, this is exactly you know, why I love Rails, and this is also exactly how I'm designing React on Rails, to so be a, pretty much just like this. So optimize for programmer happiness, convention over configuration, the menu is omakase. Omakase means chef selections. You're gonna get my chef selections in React on Rails, and I'm not a dictator though, I get community feedback. <laughs> but I do make the final decision. <laughs> no one paradigm, um, the no one paradigm is actually great because like, this, this also applies to Rails adoption of React on Rails because Rails just came out with Webpacker. I'm gonna be talking about that during the talk. It's like, well, you need React on Rails, now we got Webpacker. But no one paradigm, there's different ways to do it. And in fact, React on Rails was very different than the standard way of doing it because back then, it was just CoffeeScript. It was, you know, jQuery. So I was, you know, renegade. Okay, exalt beautiful code. Make it, make it look good, of course. Sharp knives, I think all of you know how to use Webpack and ES6, I know it's a pretty darn sharp knife compared to a little CoffeeScript, a little jQuery. Value integrated system, this is React on Rails, and Rails, this is it all just works. You just run a few commands, you'll see that today. Progress over stability, I love this one because I release React on Rails all the time when I feel like it. And the reason why I do that is we have a great, great integration, great set of integration tests. And push up a big tent. This again is like the no one paradigm. I was actually talking to David a bit about this stuff. He goes, oh yeah, push up a big tent, you know, the, you read this article, The Doctrine. It's like, you know, everybody can bring their own drinks to the party. Yeah, cool, I brought my own drink. They said maybe you might like the drink they bring. Cool. So by the way, Rail, David Heinmeier Hansen, creator of Ruby on Rails. I didn't mention Matt's creator of Ruby. In addition to the Rails doctrine, this is our big part for React on Rails. Run with the JavaScript herd. So why is that so important? Um, part of it's you'll see with Webpacker is they're trying to, a little bit of part of Webpacker is, is they don't want you to have to configure Webpack. Well, we're all about, when you're in JavaScript land and front end land, just go with, the, go with the community, run with the herd. Rails back in 2014, does anybody remember Rails 2014? Back then, CoffeeScript was cool. Maybe use Haml, maybe use ERB. And you know, Rails just worked, that was great. We build web apps, it was so easy. It was like, I swear, when I first started using Rails, like you had superhuman powers. It's like, God, it's so good. Now, this is an example from the Rails tutorial. I actually learned um, Ruby uh, Rails from the Rails tutorial. Michael is a friend of mine. Is simple jQuery on a Rails view happiness? And it was back in 2014. Hey, look at this example. You can like validate this file upload here. 
Cool. How about in 2017? Well, this is the app, friends and guests. This is the app um, my company is building. I told you I'm CEO of both Shock Code and Friends and Guests. It's really one company. So we're building a consumer app. Now, a consumer app is not that easy to build. Um, this kind of looks a little bit like maybe like Airbnb. This is an application that's we, it's going to be kind of basically a combination of the features you get in Airbnb plus some of the features you get in LinkedIn, such as privacy options. So how easy would it be to build this using some jQuery? Can you imagine manipulating all these DOM elements with jQuery, flipping stuff around, doing all this stuff? Not really, right? OK. So jQuery for modern UX is really, was really not the way to go. And I knew this from all that coffee strip jQuery soup I made. I mean, if you ever felt you kind of a, it just becomes this like massive, you know, goop. It's just not very well organized. And then, so I knew at the time I had to find something better than jQuery. So React came along. Before I looked at React, I looked at Ember, I looked at Angular, and then luckily, this is like a lot of stuff in life is good luck. Um, a guy that I met stayed over at, I've got a place over in Maui, I can host friends this day that I know, and some of you that met me know that. And so if any of you do want to come visit me in Maui, email me, justinashakacode.com. It's a good, good place and a great place for any of my friends here that want to telecommute for a week or a month. That's it. That's a, it on that. Um, React. So anyway, a guy stayed at my place. This is a true story. Um, guy just Bo Hartshorn, YC grad, made the website instant domain search. Awesome little thing. Then he worked at Facebook for four years in one day, and he came to stay at my place. Originally for three months, ended up staying nine months. Actually had his um, child at my while staying at my place and. We got to be pretty good friends. He actually inspired me to start Friends and Guests. He goes, I would use that business. Anyway, I must stop digressing. He said, use React, check it out, it's different. Okay, I watched the video from Pete Hunt on it. I go, oh my God, this is different. It was just like, you know, what, why is it so easy to build apps in, um, in um, Rails? Because what happens is, is that the request response cycle, the data is going one way. And as soon as I realized that, oh my God, that's brilliant. Because now, you know, you get a request, you update, you send back, you know, it's like an API request. And doing stuff in the browser with jQuery soup was just god awful. You know, oh, do this, do that, do that, do that, and do the timing of this, and then you get that bug, right? How many of you have ever seen that? It's awful. Anyway, React, single flow of data, gives you superhuman powers, it just works, amazing community as well. And now React Native. My um, little consulting company is we build React Native apps as well. So can't go wrong there. Ask half of your friends here. I bet probably 90% of you use React now if, you, if you're using any J JavaScript framework. So value integrate systems. So this is a quote from the Rails Doctrine. That's the have all, have most of it all we seek. All the power of individually tuned and distributed applications and ease and use and understanding of a single integrated system. So why, um, you know, how does that apply to Rails? We just saw in the last talk, the whole thing, it just works. I wanted to make it work like that for pu putting JavaScript with React on the front end. And I think the reason why most of you are here is you'll see, I think we've accomplished that, right? So this is what happens if you don't kind of do it the React on Rails way. Sure, build a separate Node.js and you know, get an Express server going, build your API server, maybe even throw in a few microservices too and make in a couple GitHub repos, right? Is that gonna be a lot of fun? Maybe not. Okay, but in case you do think it's fun, one of my team members actually wrote an article how to do this. It's complicated. So, the React Dash Rails gem. This is really, really popular, back, especially back 2014. This, this gem came along, I think, in maybe 2012. And look, it's from the React JS organization. That's pretty official, right? Well, let's see. Let's see how this thing works out. So I made a tutorial showing people step by step how to do everything. Cool. Now, um, when I was doing that, I realized, oh, cool, I'm using React. I like Twitter Bootstrap. There's a library called React Bootstrap. This is 2014. How easy was it for me to integrate 
React Bootstrap with, you know, in 2014. React-Rails is acid pipeline based. So what I would have had to do is I would have had to copy paste the JS files into my project. Do any of you still copy and paste JavaScript files from GitHub repos in your projects? I hope not. That was, but hey, in 2014, did any of you ever do that? Oh yeah, everybody did, right? So then you have, um, you know, it's just, oh, it was awful. And then so what was your other alternative? Ruby gems, right? How many of you use, I call gemified um, JavaScript, jQuery, right? The jQuery libraries, all these libraries, right? So here's like an example of gemified JavaScript, React Redux Rails, oh great, you know? They, do, they have only 2,500 or 3,600 downloads. Um, hasn't been updated in 2015 because they figured out, hey, this is not cool. Remember, I did this, and this is 2014. This is the dark days of doing this stuff. So here's an example of copy and paste dependencies. God, would you want to work on an open source project that's doing that? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, so what do we all believe in the, um, you know, the programming world? Dry, don't repeat yourself, right? And copying and pasting code into your vendor directory is yuck, okay? So what do we have in the Ruby world? Ruby gems, bundler, it just works, right? Open source, um, with the JavaScript world, we got NPM, we got GitHub, we got Yarn, the NPM stuff, it just made it so easy. All of a sudden you have a package JSON, you can reference the exact version you want, or you can reference a GitHub repo. And I looked at all the alternatives to doing it back in 2014, and um, it was clear that we just had, I had to come up with something. And I looked at something like Browserify, whatever, they weren't, I don't know, there were a bunch of other ones, none of them I can't even remember right now. So, so what are the things I'm going for, you know, when I was trying to build a system? I definitely want programmer happiness, I wanted to embrace JS, and that's kind of where I came up with number 10, run with the JavaScript herd. And part of why I wanted to run with the JavaScript herd back in those days is that it quickly became apparent when I was using some of the examples from React that were in JavaScript and I wanted to do CoffeeScript. Was that gonna be fun? Not at all. Here's an example, this is a current example from React. So. Well, what do we do? What did you do when you, do, you, do any of you ever do this when you're like learning, um, you didn't want, you guys saw JavaScript? Oh, let me copy and paste and get the CoffeeScript example, right? Well, great, I copy and paste the React code into the CoffeeScript converter and well, script is not defined or whatever, it just errors out. Okay, that kind of sucks. So writing your code the way of your herd is happiness. That's one of our philosophies. So, you know, emulate the examples. I think um, probably hardly um, anybody that's starting a new project is gonna use CoffeeScript these days. Okay, so recap. What are the challenges with React-Rails? Why didn't I wanna do the way that just works? And a lot of people at this time were using React-Rails. Number one was no ES6 support. Number two was that um, there was no support for common JS modules in Babel. Everything was global. Literally, it was global back then. And Babel's the thing that put it all together and gave us ES6. And so, once again, I got lucky. Um, Bo told me to talk to his friend, um, Pete Hunt. Many of you have probably seen Pete Hunt's videos. He goes, hey, Justin, we're using um, Webpack over at Instagram. Check it out. So I check it out. There was no really obvious way to use it, per se, when I first started looking. I found one little article on maybe a way to do it. And the key concept that I took away from using Webpack was I could take all of my JavaScript files, load the stuff up using package.json, you know, you know, configure it, and Webpack would take all these files and just stick them all together, and I could stick that thing through the acid pipeline. That was the only concept that I had to get me started on this. So I figured this was just so great because there was no other easy way to use Babel at the time in the ES6. So I got so excited about this. And at this time, I still am. Well, at this time, I was an independent consultant. Now I've got a team of, um, a small team of consultants. And so I, the only way I was finding work was I would write articles. I think it's like a better than you know, paying for Google ads, wherever, just give away stuff, and people see your stuff and they get in touch with you. 
So I wrote a super detailed article back 2014, October 3rd. How many of you saw this article that were doing some of this work? I did talk to a couple people here. They said, oh yeah, just right before this talk, um, Platter, the company that does a, does a food delivery, which does not deliver to Hawaii, so that's why I don't use them. But um, they, um, they said that, oh yeah, you, you helped us figure out how to do it. We don't use your gem, we wrote our own little thing. But they saw us before I wrote the gem. So here were my main points of the article was gemified JavaScript, um, you know, what I call this tourist JavaScript. Because literally, most of the real stuff in 2014 was still CoffeeScript. I go, no way. This is using the gemified JavaScript, the CoffeeScript, and globals. How cool are, you know, JavaScript globals these days? Not that cool. So we're going to use NPM, we're going to use ES6, we're going to use modules. And I love this little picture, because this is the way it felt. Once I discovered the world of JavaScript open source, then there was so much out there. I could just easily put in, just like Ruby gems. The, the amount of work it takes out a Ruby gem to a pro project compared to, you know, what if you had to copy and paste a bunch of Ruby code? And that's what we did with the JavaScript or CoffeeScript. So I came up with this example app, the React-Webpack Rails tutorial. Some of you may have seen this. This is actually live at reactrails.com. Um, by the way, if anyone, you know, you can go on this site right now. If anybody um, checks out, there's like kind of running example of stuff. I think these mics are on also, by the way, kind of picking me up when I get close to this um, thing. So here's the example app I can say right here. Here's, this is live right now. You can go to React Rails, say, I love, Go Ruko. All right. And in fact, this is even um, Markdown. So I will put this in a um, pound. <laughs> All right. I also love Go Ruko. Anyway, you can do this. Here's an example of the technique. And I thought this was going to be enough just building an example app and building a really detailed article. We got some funny, what's up? Okay, um, by the way, this, there is no filtering on this. Someone could put anything on there. <laughs> However, I quickly figured out it worked better to delete all the messages at the end of every day on this little toy example. They also did not let me put this toy example on the App Store when I made a React Native of it. But anyway, this has got some cool stuff. Like for example, if you said like, um, you know, how is this cool? It's like, look, this is all you know, using a Redux store right here. And so I changed this to, uh, oh, that's nice. Um, say something here, and you know, it's in line, it's this. I can go up here, I can go here. This is in, I'm not even sure, Chinese maybe? Um, this is an example of React Router. And so I can go over to here. This will redirect back. This goes to a different page, blah, blah, blah. Okay. That's enough of that, but it's live. And you can see, here's the open source repo of this. This was kind of cool. Okay, but we're gonna do better. Hello, let's go back to presentation. Thank you. Okay, um, part of what I showed in the example was, was that running with the JavaScript herd is way better. We have ESLint there, um, CSS modules, the prettier thing, and all these cool tools. So why make a gem? Okay, this was like September. I came out with the article, and you know, I think the gem was released, I think, um, 2015. So I thought I was so cool. I wrote the article, and I had this example. But then people are saying, oh, no, no, we still use React Rails because you know, the main reason was actually is no server rendering. So I didn't understand what server rendering was because I was writing an internal app that um, you know, I needed to do something like React, but it didn't need SEO. So it was too, so then the other example, I'll, I'll explain server rendering a little bit more later. The other thing was it was too hard to implement the example app and article. Um, it was too hard to implement from the example app and article because it's like a cookbook recipe. There are a lot of you know, different little steps. You'd have to copy and paste all the stuff from the example app. So hey, you know, we saw this in the last talk. It just works as happiness, right? That's the Rails way, right? Well, shoots, I like challenges, and I'm going to figure out a way to make this work. So I started the React on Rails gem. The very first commit was August 16, 2015. 
you know, so what were the influences? You're gonna go build a gem, um, extract, you know, make an open source example like I did. Don't build a gem for just some code. You know, I had this open source code people were already helping me out with. So extract code you can reuse and be influenced by other gems. It's heavily influenced by the React um, Dash Rails gem. So what are the things that React on Rails gives you? Put React under Rails views. We get the view helper React component. We can pass the Rails props seamlessly to React, meaning data comes out of your database, will render automatically in the JavaScript, or, and well, even better than that, it'll even server render, and then the, then the React server rendering will load. So server rendering, why is server rendering? The big one now, we just had a discussion with someone, SEO with web crawlers, they now take JavaScript, but they might only wait a second or two to see if your JavaScript's loaded. So, in the, so it's how easy is it to turn on server rendering? You set one option when you render a component. Redux, this is something we integrate with right out of the box, and you can have multiple React components on a page in React on Rails using the same Redux store. I use this for a header that's got a Redux store and a body, and that way I have the same header code that could be associated with regular ERB in the body, or can switch to React in the body. Support React Router, which that just does a, I'm not gonna go into it, but if any of you know that, the fact we support that with the um, server rendering is cool stuff. It handles your routes. Um, RSpec integration is super easy. All you do is you put in this test helper. Why is RSpec configuration kind of a bit difficult with um, React, with things like, you know, when you're building your stuff with Webpack. Well, look, if you run your integration test and you didn't update your files, update your Webpack created files and your JavaScript, well, your test fails, right? And, and so with React on Rails, you don't even need to do anything at all for CI. You just set up so it works in development mode and it just works with that simple helper. Um, localization, all your Ruby YAML files will just work now in your JavaScript. Um, that was an incredible effort by a guy I can't remember off the top of my head in terms of the amount of work that went into that, in terms of the pull request we've taken. So how does it work? How's like, you know, what's the basic over philosophy of React on Rails? It, I call it, it's simple running with the JavaScript herd. You basically put your whole client app underneath the client directory, slash client. Pretty much everything is there. A couple files are not, but almost everything. So your Webpack config, the other requirement is you're gonna make a Webpack config and it must, public, it must publish the files to the public directory and output a manifest.json in that directory. And that's how the whole, all the glue works together so your view helper will know, be able to put it on your Rails layout and say, oh yeah, here's the right JavaScript file. So I say incremental migration to high fidelity UX is happiness. So if any of you take like a large app and you want to make it a brand new single page Ember app, is that going to be easy? Um, not necessarily, actually it could be quite painful. So you can mix and match Rails and React JS components really super seamlessly. And this is what people, what React, the React Dash Rails framework gave people a long time ago. The other thing you can do also, which um, we're doing at Shaka Code, is we're incrementally migrating Angular Angular and Rails projects to React. Now, why are Angular projects going to um, React? Because they're using Angular 1 and they don't want to go to Angular 2. And we're using React on Rails. Some of you have um, probably been to Egghead IO. We're doing that for them. So the menu is omakase. So the mandatory parts of the omakase part, remember, chef selection, React and Webpack. That was the difference I made than React Dash Rails. React Dash Rails was just React. So we recommend React Router, Redux, and React I18N, but it's not required. So what about the Rails herd in 2017? You, they picked Yarn and ES6. Hey, we were there with the, um, the React on Rails way in 2014, so I was pretty stoked that I made the right bets on these. So you, some of you that have been looking into this go, okay, now Webpacker Rails supports Webpack out of the box, right? And React. Why do you need React on Rails? Well, there's a difference in the philosophy. 
With Webpacker, it's all about convention over configuration. We don't, want to have, you, we don't want you to have to do the messy work of figuring out where, um, you know, we don't, they don't want you to have to figure out how to use Webpack. So with React on Rails, uh, excuse me, so with Webpacker, you just do some things with convention over configuration. With React on Rails, I like to say it's the sharper knives approach. You put your full client app in the client directory, you can do, and so that you're, you have to learn how to do Webpack. You're going to do server rendering. You're going to, and it's going to be more of our omakase approach. We pick, um, you know, Redux, React Router, and all this stuff. So it's different. With Webpacker, it's very simply they make the React library available to you. Now it turns out that, well, I'll, I'll explain in a sec, but React on Rails now also depends on Webpacker. So what, what is it like with Re React on Rails install? You know, this is what it takes. This is the it just works, literally. This is it just works. Let me show you this video. So what I did was, so I just made a brand new Rails app. I'm now going into the directory. I'm going to edit the gem file. I'm going to add React on Rails to the gem file. And I'm going to set the version of React on Rails. It's really important because there is a node library that also goes with React on Rails. So it's not just a gem, it's also an NPM module. I ran bundle, now I just ran the installer. React, Rails generate, React on Rails install, that's it. Bundle and yarn. Foreman, start f, proc file dash dev, and that's it. Literally, that's it. That gives you hello world. I gave this talk a few, day, um, few times over at Pivotal, so hello Pivotal Labs. That's it. So how, is that kind of, it just works for adding React with Webpack to an app? Okay, so what does this look like under the hood? So we've got the JavaScript pack tag, Webpack bundle. This is, this is literally when you run the installer, this is what we're gonna put in there. By the way, there's two main things you're gonna get with React on Rails. The so one thing is the, the default generator. Generates the simplest possible Hello World app with React on Rails. The other example app I showed you earlier shows you how to do it with a more production type app. I'm showing you the generator one because this is a very quick demo. So JavaScript pack tag, that is Webpacker's new helper, so we're using it. So what does it look like in your ERB view? You put React component, hello world. My props are my hello world props, so this could have come from the database. And I'm passing pre-render false. The default is false, but I'm just showing you this here because we're gonna convert to true in a sec. So what does this look like? Import React on Rails from React on Rails. This is the um, component, the, J the React component. Import hello world from components hello world. Now I'm gonna call React on Rails .register, hello world. That is the glue between your JavaScript code and your Rails view. Do you guys like that? You all like that? Kind of simple, right? Clean. Okay, with client rendering, you get here rendered hello world to DOM node. So this is some um, debug rendering you get in de development mode. So part of what I wanted to do in terms of developer happiness was give you anything helpful out of the box to help you build your apps. One of them, just council logging by default, you can see the props that were passed in and you're told it rendered. So if you have any mistakes in there, you'll know immediately. This is what it looks like in the JavaScript in the source. It's nice to take a look at that so you can see what actually happens under the hood. You can see what the Webpacker um, view helper tag did up at the top there. And down at the bottom is, are your props that got passed, could have been from your database. And below that is a placeholder for the client side rendering. That basically, Rails puts a div with this gobbledygook ID there, and then your JavaScript will be told by, our app, by um, some magic in React on Rails, hey, render this component after the page loads to that div. So you see this kind of um, interlacing of Rails world and the, Rea and the Rails JavaScript world. 
So what does this look like with server rendering? We just had to change it to true, the pre-render option. That's not a whole lot of work, is it? So in this case, so notice our console log message tells us that we server rendered. Now, by the way, if you've ever tried to do server rendering, you get lots of weird errors, you can appreciate, I think some of you probably use React and Rails, I put a huge amount of work into making sure the error messages are as good as possible. So here's what it looks like in the, um, for server rendering. Server rendering shows a special React code. And that, what that does is it just puts, that way the browser loads instantly. And uh, somebody can, looking at the app, can see what's going on, but they don't actually, um, you know, they can't interact with the app yet. So avoiding yak shaving is happiness. This is one of the philosophies of, you know, of myself, I teach my team members, the key thing is to get out of I am stuck land. Um, one of the things I've gotten from React on Rails is just a lot of fan mail from around the world. And this one, I really wish error messages were all this good. I kind of like that one. And that kind of encouraged me to put even more and more error messages, so happiness. Fast feedback is fast feedback is happiness. You, you want a quick, quick development cycle. So we get hot reloading. There's not a thing you can do with React. You don't even hit refresh. Progress over stability is happiness. As I mentioned, we um, I have a very detailed change log. If any of you see that, I think um, I hope some of you appreciate that. And um, the only way I can um, release so quickly is that some of my contributors are parts of my team built incredible integration tests. Our integration tests for React on Rails create new Rails apps, add tests, capybara tests, to that code and that was generated and runs that as part of our CI suite. And we even run CI on both um, CodeShip and Travis. I'm so neurotic about this. Yeah, with different, um, different JS engines, it really helps. I mean, you find just, you know, if you're debugging stuff, so it's great. So I can release with a great deal of confidence. We even support all the way back to Rails 3 and Ruby 2.1, but I don't necessarily test on those. Okay, sharp knives. This is, this is key, sharp knives. Webpacker light versus Webpacker. Why in the world would I fork something as part of the Rails, you know, part of the Rails organization? Who's gonna use a fork? Well, I knew that I would get a few people using it because it's dependency of my gem, so. So it wasn't that bad that I did that. And um, the problem that they, I was getting at first was the principle of least surprise. They were just doing this stuff. It didn't work the way I wanted it to work. Um, I'm not gonna go into the details of that. There's a detailed conversation on the um, issues. But I just wanted clarity and simplicity. If you're not using Webpacker, but we have to be able to use the view helpers, you know, the asset helpers, to do stuff. I mean, here, here just like, um, Really quick, the way Webpacker, a big part of the way it works, is, is that you create your, um, from your Webpack file, it will deploy files to the public directory, and you'll deploy files of the manifest. There's a view helper that will see the manifest and will be able to map to the name you put in your Rails view, and it'll put that gobbledygook unique hash on the end of it, and it'll display it in production mode the right thing. So that's, that's like the big thing right there. So the, the, the helper just kind of gives you all that stuff, and that was all I wanted. Webpacker gives you a whole lot more stuff that I didn't want. Anyway, the good news is that we've kind of come to agreement on our differences, and right after the conference, I'm gonna be putting in the pull request and merging it. Webpacker Lite gets merged back into Webpacker and React on Rails depends on it. Um, React on Rails version seven and below we put everything through the asset pipeline. And what happened then is I depended on the asset pipeline to minify everything and fingerprint everything. So now, um, now what we do is we go through the Webpacker helpers, and it's a lot simpler now. It's a lot better, it's a lot more elegant. So we've got a really active community on React on Rails. This might even be higher now. We're super stoked on that. Um, you know, running with the herd, uh, definitely. The thing about using React on Rails, stuff gets fixed really fast, mostly because I fix it, and, but other people report issues super fast. We have a lot of commercial projects that are live on it. By the way, anybody you hear that are, um, have projects on it, please, please email me your project. I'd love to listen to the projects that are using this. 
Um, Friends and Guests uses it, of course. AKED.io uses it. They went from Angular over to React. Blink's another um, client of ours that uses it. So avoiding yak shaving is happiness, once again. So what do I do? You know, some of the things I've done is I created a forum, and this is a place you can um, post your questions on React, React on Rails. I've got a community forum here. Anybody can feel free to email me, and I will add you to our Slack forum. Um, we have a coaching program, which is kind of just like a you know, small amount for some paid support for React on Rails, and I really do appreciate you know, any referrals you give to us, because this, this is how we pay for development of React and Rails. This obviously takes a lot of time if any of you try to do any open source in your free time. So, you know, the key thing, what is the key, th um, the key thing about React on Rails? Why are you going to use it? Because you're going to run with the JavaScript herd. Thank you very much. <laughs>